Once all of your footage is imported into Premiere, you can organize the bin by dragging the tab into a different area of the Premiere window. You can quickly review your footage by scrubbing over the thumbnails. When you want to get a closer look of the footage, you can double click the thumbnail to open the video in the preview window. To create a new sequence, pick a thumbnail and drag the whole thing down into the icon called New Item. This will create a new sequence based off of the format of the video that you chose. It will automatically drop the entire video that you chose to create the sequence with. Go ahead and delete that. In the preview window, you can review your footage and choose certain points of each clip to drag into Premiere. While reviewing your footage in the preview window, you can hit the I and the O keys on the keyboard to set in and out points highlighting specific parts of the video that you want to drag into the sequence. By highlighting a specific part of your video, you are choosing everything that you know you will use and leaving out everything you know you will not use. When you have set the in and out points, you can drag the video and audio by clicking on the image in the preview window and dragging into the sequence. This will bring the video and audio together synced. If you decide that you do not want the audio, you can drag from the film strip icon just below the preview window. Or if you decide you do not want the video, you can drag from the wavelength icon below the preview window. Once you have some videos in the sequence, one of the first tools you may want to use is the razor tool. This tool will allow you to split a clip into two parts. If you decide that you want a clip to be longer or shorter, you can hover your cursor over the end or beginning of a clip and it will turn into a little red arrow with a red bracket. When you click and drag, you will drag out or in the entire clip, essentially adding more frames on or taking away from the original source footage. So you can only drag the clip to be as long as the original video was. In the video clip, there's a little yellow line. This represents the opacity meter. When you drag the opacity meter up and down, it will make the video more or less transparent. You can overlay a transparent video on top of another video and have one bleed through into the other, just like a double exposure effect. If a fully opaque video is on top of another, you will only see what is on top. Using the pen tool, you can set keyframes to make the opacity meter change throughout the entire clip. You can set as many keyframes as you want. Similarly, the audio clip in the sequence has a little yellow line. This represents volume instead of opacity. When you drag this line up or down, it will make the sound louder or quieter. Be careful of going into the red. You can use the pen tool to change the audio throughout one clip as well. When the video playback is becoming too slow or starts to lag, you may also see a little red line just above the sequence. This lets you know that you may want to render the video. You can render the video by hitting enter. Rendering allows the clip to play back smoothly with all of the effects and transitions you may have added. To add an effect or transition, go to the effects tab and into the list 
of transitions or effects and drag directly from there into the sequence. Once your video is finished, you can go File, Export, Media. This will open the Export Settings window. Here you can quickly review your video to make sure that everything is present that needs to be. Choose the proper export settings. We prefer format H.264 and preset HD 1080p Once that's done, you can choose the output name. Change the name to whatever you want and choose a place to save to. Make sure you are exporting video as well as audio. Once you have everything set, hit export and the video will be saved to the place that you chose.